All stand to attention for the King of Albion. Logan, former King of Albion, you stand accused today of crimes against the kingdom and its people. Those who brought you to justice will now speak. There's not a soul alive in the kingdom who hasn't suffered for his glory and plenty who've died for it. I says, let him have some death of his own. Look, I'm not one for lopping people's heads off, but we saw Major Swift executed like it was a bloody circus act. He deserves nothing less as far as I'm concerned. But aren't we better than that? Isn't that why we fought to be here now? I've seen what Logan has done to this city. People starving to death, children forced to work, but killing him now won't solve anything. It is not my place to decide his fate, but his betrayal condemned many of my people to death. He promised us salvation and then left us to face the darkness alone. I had good reason to break that promise, and I had good reason for the crimes you claim I committed. The day I returned to Albion, I received a visit from a blind seer, Teresa, our father's guide. She showed me the future of this kingdom. The darkness in Aurora is coming here, bringing death, destruction, the end of our way of life. The sacrifices I had to make, I did them to protect Albion. If a few had to suffer, it was to build an army. If a few had to die, it was to save a country. I have spent years preparing for this attack. Let me stand by your side now, and all my soldiers will be yours to command. Let us face the coming darkness, together. If this is true. If it's really coming here, we are all in grave danger. You have the power over life and death, brother. Now choose. This is not the time for revenge. We need your help, Logan. The king has made his decision. Logan's life will be spared. I know you will never forgive me for the things I've done. You told me so once, remember? Of course I do. But what matters now is that we defend our land. The castle is yours. And so is the throne. I'm glad to be rid of them. You have fulfilled the first part of your destiny. You were little more than a child when you left the castle. You have become a hero, a leader. And now, finally, a monarch. But your journey is not yet done. Now you are king. You can know the truth. Albion will soon be attacked, and the threat could not be greater. Darkness is coming to our land. It cannot be reasoned with, it cannot be halted. The ruler of Albion is all that stands between the world we inhabit and that darkness. That is why you had to take your brother's place. The course of history demands it. If you do not succeed, everything we know will come to an end. Why didn't you tell me all this at the start? It was never about Logan, was it? I told you what you needed to know, and I never spoke anything but the truth. With Logan on the throne, Albin would have been doomed. This much I know. Only with a hero wearing the crown do we stand a chance of survival. And how do I stop it? You won't. Its arrival is inevitable. One year from now, the darkness will fall upon Albion. All you can do is prepare, and hope to save as many of your people as you can. How you do so is up to you. Two paths lie ahead. You may keep the promises you have made and be known as a benevolent ruler, but understand that doing so will leave little to spend on the kingdom's protection and may lead you to disaster. It is not easy to be popular and keep the treasury full unless you are willing to sacrifice your personal wealth, but you may also choose to break those promises 
to harm your people in order to save them. You will not lack the means to build the army you need, but you will be hated. This path will cast you in the role of a tyrant, as it did your brother. You have one year to do what Logan could not. Be the ruler that readies Albion for the greatest threat it has ever faced, and be the hero that can stand against it. Your Majesty, I'm not sure what to say after receiving such news. The darkness that is coming. People won't understand what it means. Nobody could, without living through it first. We need to prepare. If we can't stop the attack from happening, we have to be ready when it comes. Having Logan's troops on our side is a good start, but you will need to raise a fortune to pay for the army we'll need. Hobson will show you the treasury, and I'm sure he can explain just how to fill it. Indeed I can. Then I will leave you to it. Ben and I will begin recruiting and training soldiers at once. If you will follow me, your majesty. Oh, how I have looked forward to this moment. This is it. Albion's royal treasury, the store of the kingdom's total wealth. It's, well, not as um, replete as one would like, but just imagine this room shimmering with hills, valleys, and plateaus of gold. A topography of riches going all the way up to the ceiling. It will require nothing less to build this army everyone is talking about. Which brings us to the second item on today's agenda, and one I'm personally very excited about. Setting the tax rate for the coming year. As you probably know, your brother was taxing the people rather heavily, and some say that this has led to poverty, starvation, and other societal ills. You have three clear choices, Your Majesty. One. Very well, Your Majesty. Well, how very... noble. Yes, I suppose noble is the word. How very noble of you. The people are no doubt dancing in the streets. And we are bankrupt. You will need to be more ruthless if you wish to save the kingdom, Your Majesty. There are other, less salubrious means of filling the treasury, of course. You may donate your own gold, should you have enough. Though I must say, such charity is unheard of. However you decide to proceed, you should acquaint yourself with the Royal Ledger. It is a logbook that allows the reigning monarch to make deposits and withdrawals from the treasury. A most useful financial tool. But my, look at the time. You really ought to attend to the next item on today's agenda. Riva has a most intriguing proposal for you in Bowerstone Industrial. Now, I know you have had your differences, but it is time to put those behind you and work together. Nobody can raise money like Riva can, I assure you. I have seen to it that your appearance among the populace is well publicized. So, expect a crowd. Don't tempt. Oh, happy day! His Majesty, the King of Albion, graces us with his radiant presence. 
I knew last time we met that you would emerge victorious from such public sibling rivalry. And now, here I am to assist you in filling your coffers till they are fit to burst. What better way to begin your reign than by reinstating one of my most successful policies? There is no greater waste than the idleness of our city's youth. But my employment scheme guarantees children of all ages will have something to occupy them, whilst ensuring our factories are properly manned. That's... it's just monstrous. Don't listen to him. You promised you would end child labor. Remember that promise now. And what would you have us do with the snotty little indigents? The only way Bowerstone is going to climb out of the gutter is through education. Nothing is more important to our future than that. Turn this factory into a school. Give the children of this city the chance they never had. A school? Well, that's an original thought. Well, the factory will become a school. Thank you. We can really start changing people's lives now. This will be an Albion worth fighting for. I shall begin the necessary modifications at once. Welcome to Reaver Industries Learning Center, Bowerstone Industrial's first ever school. You can now feel secure in the knowledge that your children can become the well-educated automatons you always wanted them to be. I cannot tell you what... Everything all right, Your Majesty? Yes, sir. Hello, Hello there, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. All stand to attention. Today, you will decide what is to be done with the Bowerstone Old Quarter, site of the Battle for Albion. Paige will offer her proposal. Reaver shall stand against her. You may speak. Your Majesty, our victory came at a great cost to the city. You vowed to fight poverty, but our actions have made the problem worse. We destroyed the old quarter. It's only right we rebuild it. The King has reached his decision. The old quarter shall be rebuilt and its former residents will have their homes returned. Thank you, Your Majesty. This will be a very popular move. <sighs> I suppose there may be something to be gained by rebuilding part of the city. It shows our sense of industry has not yet been dampened. Very well, Your Majesty. Despite the current climate of fear and great national need, Reva Industries has once again struck a blow for the honest man on the street. The sad sight of the decayed and war-torn old quarter is no more. We are proud to present the new old quarter. It breaks one's heart to see the treasure is so empty. If we don't do something about it, we will all die. And I have some very definitive retirement plans. As a matter of fact, our very first order of business might have a... 
The people will be delighted, Your Majesty. But will they thank you when they are dead? Not unless they are turned into some sort of awful zombie creatures. Um, that isn't what is going to happen, is it? Anyway, this will leave a sizable gap in the treasury. Unless you can cover the expenses out of your own pocket, I'm afraid we shall be in dire straits indeed. Let us now turn our attention to the rest of today's business. Here is the royal schedule I have prepared. As you can see, you have a busy day in the court, but a tremendously enjoyable one. Decoration is a passion of mine, and I simply cannot wait to see your choice. The interior designers await you in the throne room. I trust you are well, sir. My lord, greetings, sir. My lord. All stand to attention for the King of Albion. Today, you decide on the decor of the castle. Two of Albion's greatest interior designers have come to present their suggestions. You may speak. Your Majesty, I am Herman Worthy, and I have a design in mind that will blow your little royal socks off. Imagine a celestial scheme capable of lifting the shadows that haunt these halls. A fabulous balance of serene hues that announce to the world, I am a strong, virtuous leader. Hear me roar. But also, look how pretty my home is. You are an enlightened king. Let the heart of your castle be enlightened too. Celestial? Serene? Pretty? Do you wish to be known as a ruler or as a fool? I am civil. I wish this to be an enlightened castle. Oh, fabulous, Your Majesty. Fabulous. Your castle will be a vision of purity. And what's more, fashion and good taste must choke down their nausea. Today, you decide on the future of Aurora, Your Majesty. Kaylin will speak for her people. Reva will dispute her cause. You may speak. I am here to seek the protection you promised. It is too long since my people felt safe or knew of life without suffering. We were honored to join your fight to claim Albion. Now it is time we joined your kingdom. Do what your brother failed to do. Help us to rebuild. I will keep my promise. Aurora will become part of Albion, and its people will be our equals in every way. The king has spoken. Aurora shall be rebuilt as part of Albion, and equal to every other part of the kingdom. Thank you, Majesty. You have proven to be a man of honor. Aurora is proud to stand at your side. Welcome to the new and improved Aurora, an oasis of friendship, camaraderie, and many other lovely things. Visit the city that Riva Industries rebuilt from sand, stone, and corpses. Enjoy the sunshine, the odd local customs, and the heavy soldier presence. Aurora, a light blooming in the darkness. 